Hello and welcome to Modern Dirty Road and Geekery. Today I'm once again diving into the world of Stable Diffusion and what am I looking at this time? Well, basically ways to put arbitrary things into Stable Diffusion such as yourself or a picture of your cat or a style, anything like that. How? Using textual inversion. Here it is. An image is worth one word. Personalizing text to image generation using textual inversion. There is a link to the paper. So let's have a quick look at the abstract here. So using three to five images of a user provided concept like an object or a style, we learn to represent it through new words in the embedding space of a frozen text to image model. These words can be composed into natural language sentences guiding personalized creation in an intuitive way. So here we have the very intuitive way. We've got a number of pictures there. We've got a data set of four or three, and then we can do an oil painting of it or an app icon of it or Elmo sitting in the same pose as it or a crochet version of it. So we, you know exactly what we're doing now. Yeah, we've got the pictures, turning them into things that we can use in stable diffusion. All right, so let's have a look at getting this installed. My environment is Ubuntu 22.04. Do feel free to use Microsoft Windows, but of course, any commands I use here and your performance may vary. I'm using an NVIDIA GPU with the NVIDIA drivers and CUDA Toolkit 11.7.1 and Anaconda to manage my virtual Python environment. You will, of course, need some of those images. Five is absolutely fine. This is ideal for fun. If you want to have fun, if you like having fun, then do this. Uh, or maybe you're using Stable Diffusion to make a comic or a graphic novel. And this is absolutely ideal for getting consistent characters because you can train them, throw those embeddings in, and then they look the same all the time. Now, this being a GitHub repository, you will, of course, want to Git clone that, download the code, and change directory into your newly downloaded code. Now, apparently some Microsoft Windows users have trouble using that normal code, so there is another GitHub repository there that you can use instead. Remember, all these links are down in the description. Now, you're fine tuning for Stable Diffusion, so you probably already have an LDM environment, so you can just do Condor Activate LDM. Okay, fair enough. Uh, if you don't, then you can Condor M Create minus F environment.yaml before creating it. Now, if you do have your previous uh, environment, you probably want to install a couple more things. So pip install, set up tools and pip install pillow as well. That will get you updated. Now, a few notes on your data set. So here is an example data set of five images. It's basically just a face. I grabbed this face off Pixabay. So there it is, Pixabay. I just sorted by latest, got a few pictures, took the face out of there because I figured, okay, it's a new face. It probably won't be in Stable Diffusion, right? Okay. So the, here they also mentioned downloading the checkpoint. That's the latent diffusion checkpoint, but we are using the Stable Diffusion one, and then you're ready to go. So you can copy paste that command there. There it is, copy paste it, and you can run. So here we go. Right. Now on a 3090, this takes about two hours at 6100 steps at 512 by 512. Uh, for reasons you will also want to comment out the last two lines of main.py. There it is, main.py, and then just comment out those last two lines. It's only a print statement anyway, and that will make it run without error. All right. So now I've also added a few other bits and pieces in here as well but I'll go through them step by step anyway. Now, one thing to note is the uh, the learning rate is scaled by default. So accumulate grad batches times number of GPUs times your batch size times your base learning rate. That's going to be your actual model learning rate. So base config, those are the configs. There's the YAML files up in these configs, stable diffusion, version one fine tune. So I'll go through this in just a second, but that's the config that you're going to be using. You don't have to edit that config at all because you can just use the init word instead. You can literally just run that command as is and it will go through and do its stuff all by default. But I'll show you why you may want to change some of these bits and pieces in a moment. So your actual resume model, there it is. That's your stable diffusion model. That's your model checkpoint. Name, whatever name you fancy giving it. GPU zero, don't forget the comma. That is not a typo. Data root, that's your data set. So the uh, pictures, five pictures. Uh, seed, whatever seed you fancy. Scale learning rate, true by default, but you can turn it off. And I also add no test onto the end, just because otherwise it generates an error at the end. Uh, you can continue training from previous ones by adding this embedded embedding uh, manager checkpoint and just point it to your previous embeddings.pt as well. So add that onto the end if you want to continue from a previous embedding. All right, so I, uh, I tend to throw that into a little command like that just so I can run it makes it a little bit easier than having to type all that in every time. So I'll, I will run that in a second, but let's go through the, uh, let's go through the configuration file. So there, there's the configuration file. Now there's a bunch of things that we're going to want to change in here. So this is if you're not using that init word and you do want to do some of the advanced stuff, I'd, I'd make a copy of it first, copy it with, like I've done. So I, I've, uh, I've made my own version of it. Then you've got the uh, initializer word. So now you can set more than one 
initialize a word. So for example, if you want to use a mug of a certain style, you'll have a mug style artistic. Uh, you can also change the placeholder string. Uh, you can change it to use 256 by 256, which I recommend instead of 512. Uh, that way it will train a lot faster and it'll also fit into lower VRAM GPU. So if you've got a, an eight gig or a 12 gig or a 10 gig VRAM card, then it'll still run. Just make sure you turn the image size down to 256 by 256 and you'll be good to go. You can also change the number of steps that it will train for. Uh, you can change the seed at the beginning anyway. Another important one that we're going to look at is the number of vectors per token. Now you get to use up to 75 tokens. Now the upside is the more tokens you use, the faster it trains and the more accurate it looks. The downside is it's harder to style because it looks more accurate. Yeah, so it goes, yes, I'm definitely going to give you a picture of that and I'm not going to change it in any way if you've got a very high number of tokens. So around 10 is quite good to retain some editability and still have it more accurate, although we're going to be looking at different ways that you can change even high numbers of tokens to have a little bit of editability. Uh, you can also edit the LDM data personalized.py file. Now I've changed this to have a custom template there that just has that token in and then it calls it down here. So there it is text.randomchoice whatever word you have in the thing. So I've only got one, but the default it uses is ImageNet template small. So as you can see, that's that's what it will try and train on by default. Feel free to play with those and, uh, and get different things going on. Uh, you can also train between objects and styles. It's made a little bit easier with this diffusers version, but you can do exactly the same thing in this one as well. That is down here. We've got uh, personalized base as opposed to personalized underscore style, personalized base, yeah? So you just have to change that if you wanna do a style instead. So it's, it's still perfectly capable of doing that. Right, so let's have a look at all those different things in this YAML file. So you've got your base learning rate up the top there. You can change that, make it a little bit higher, a little bit lower. The diffusers version is a little bit lower. So that you can change. The rest of those you probably wanna keep the same. So there's your placeholder string. That wants to be a single token, something like a star or a carrot or ampersand, something like that. You can change it in the diffusers one to be a word, but in this one, you want to keep it very, very simple, single character. There's your initializer word. So here I'm doing face, woman, photo. And there's that very important one, the number of vectors per token. So keep that somewhere between maybe six and 12. Again, depending on how accurate you want it to look and how editable you want it to be. If you want to, you can go all the way up to 40 and it, it'll look really, really accurate, but you know, perhaps may not be quite as editable as something else. Now, all of that stays the same as well. Here in the data section, you've got batch size and number of workers as well. That you could put up to 16 if you've got a fair amount of VRAM. Batch size, again, that'll be okay. So long as you keep the size 256, if you want to put the batch size up, remember that you know that the learning rate scales with that as well, but that's where you change the size for the training. So I'd set that to 256. Now you've also got these checkpoints. So basically it saves every 500. So if we have a look in the logs directory where everything gets output to. So here we've got the checkpoints. So there you can see it saves the checkpoints every 500. The same with the images. So that way, while it's training, you can have a look at it. You can go, all oh, right, there, there's, there's step 500. There's a thousand, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you can scroll through and maybe, maybe you prefer 1500 to 5,000. So that's fine. You can go back, you can use your embeddings 1500 instead. So that's a very handy thing that you don't get on the diffusers one. You can have a look through and see it as it's going along every 500. Uh, benchmarking, I tend to turn off just so I get a li little bit more determinism. Uh, you've got max steps there. That's how long it's going to train for. And you can add this uh, accumulate grad batches in as well. So if you've got a really, really low VRAM card, uh, you can accumulate every X batches, which is similar to, you know, uh, changing the batch size. So if, if, if I did that to one and I put that to two, that's that's pretty much equivalent, yeah. So it's uh, gradient accumulating every two rather than having a batch size of two. So that that can help with training a little bit. All right, so there we go. So let's let's just run that. So remember, this is my little script which I've got running, and uh, this is that command. So it runs it. So I've got global seed set to forty five. That's fine. Running on GPU zero. You probably recognize this absolutely massive error if you've run stable diffusion before you can just completely ignore that that's absolutely fine and then it starts its training now as mentioned at 512 by 512 that will take about two hours so i'm just going to stop that now even though that's 256 by 256 that usually takes about 20 to 30 minutes 
at half the speed, so uh, at, at half the size. So that's a yeah, and it looks just as good. Looks just as good. So let's have a look at the diffusers version. Now the diffusers version have got a collab as well. So if you want to do training over on the collab, click on that link. That'll take you over to the collab. Here we are. Here we are. We've got exactly the same thing. You put your images there. You can uh, put the, they're online. So you put whatever URLs you want into there. They've got the cat object or style whatever your placeholder is. So that's the same as the token before that was the star in this version. You can put a word in there. There's your initializer. So that's it's practically the same thing, uh, but it is ever so slightly different in that it hasn't got those config files. Now you will need to do a bunch of different things to get this installed. So this takes about an hour by default, the 3000 steps on a 3090. Now, one thing I found is that I needed diffusers 0.4.0 to get this running. I think I had 0.2.4 by default so I had to after I'd run that I actually had to uninstall diffusers and then reinstall it from the github repo then you need to run accelerate config like it says in here accelerate config uh, if you haven't already authenticated you'll need to do your hugging face CLI login as well go to the website get your token now when you run accelerate config it will ask you a whole bunch of questions so I said no I'm running on this machine zero uh, what type of machine are you running? I'm running no distributed training. Do I want to run it on the CPU? No, of course I don't. Do I want to use deep speed? No, I haven't got that installed. And do I want to use FP16 or BF16? I want to use FP, uh, BF16 <laughs> because I have a 3090. Now, one thing to note is that rather than just the usual little tiny file, the embeddings file, this will actually write out five gig of data each time it runs. So if you're if you're running that 10 times to get 10 different embeddings, then you're looking at 50 gig write onto your SSD. So that's perhaps not the best thing. Uh, the other thing to note is that the script, so when you, you, you download the diffusers, is actually in examples textual inversion. So as you can see here, accelerate launch examples. <laughs> Uh, textual inversion, textual inversion.py. So I had to throw that in there because I was running it from the diffusers directory. And of course, you'll change that to your data set. So that's your data set with all your pictures in. Uh, you've got most of the things are, are editable in there. So you can change that resolution down to 256. Absolutely fine. Still looks great. You've got your max training steps. You've got your learning rate. Uh, and uh, there, whatever you want to call it. So that's your output directory. So that's where your thing will be saved. That's where you want to look for your bin file. So rather than in here, it gives it embeddings.pt. Uh, this one will give you a bin file instead, but we're going to be using Automatic's web interface. And it actually works with either, so it doesn't matter whether you get a bin or a PT file. Now, the other thing to note, of course, is that Hugging Face has all these concepts. When you run that, it'll ask you if you want to save it into the concepts library. Here's the concepts library. So you've got a load of uh, a load of different concepts here. Yeah, so that's that's all the various different concepts. You can download those, and uh, there's an example you know, of the cat toy. So we can have this, there's the learn embeds.bin. So if you want to download that cat toy and, and play with that in Stable Diffusion, then you can. All right. So now let's, let's get these, uh, let's get these embeddings working, shall we? Now there's a few things that we can do to get them uh, being a little bit more editable and we'll go through those. So the first thing you want to do is you want to create an embeddings directory in your automatic 1111 Stable Diffusion web UE directory. So here it is. So I've got my Stable Diffusion Web UI, so that's that's the automatic 111. You create an embeddings directory, and then that's where you put your bin or your PT files, and then whatever you call them, that's the word that you're going to use when you do your inference. Yeah, okay, so let's get over here. We'll actually start up this Web UI. Now, in case you get confused and you're not sure whether it's using your embedding or not, it will tell you on the web, web, web interface right down at the bottom that it is using your embedding. So it is quite good. Now, the uh, it, on Automatic's web interface, you can use these brackets to increase or decrease the, the power, the strength of different things. Doesn't quite work at, at, the, at the moment. Um, it looks bad and also the square brackets are used for a different thing that we're actually going to use <laughs> prompt editing that does work and that does make things look a lot better and as you've seen in my previous video remember that word position matter so we're going to be using this prompt editing and word position to sort of overcome the strength of these embeddings so let's just crack open this web thing now we've got a whole bunch of things there so w26talk is that, uh, that face I did so w2 six talk 
and oh, can't spell six. There we go. So now when I generate that, that should give me a picture that's fairly similar. Textual inversion, data sets, woman two. There we go. So it's, it's fairly similar to her. And as we can see, yes, it is, because that's a six token one. Now it, I've got me that I did with diffusers. So if I have a look at this is a one token version, we're a nerdy rodent diffusers. And if I just do that, so I'm just type the token in, then I'll get a perfect picture of me. No, I won't. No, I won't. Because it works a lot better if you add some text before it. So if you do something like a photo of, then you'll actually get the picture. There you go. It looks nothing like me because it's only a one token version, but you can see there used custom terms as well. So let's go back to this. Uh, much prettier looking face. Uh, w2 six talk a photo of assuming we can actually spell photo. So there we go. So now we get a much better photo as you can see of that face. Right. So how do we get it so that we can actually style this? Because if we if we do something like this, so let's go uh, an impressionist painting of photo of W2 six stock and we'll run that through. Does this look like an impressionist painting? No, it doesn't. It still looks exactly the same, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and you can keep generating and, and some of them may have a little bit of an impressionist style in there, but you'll find that because of the strength of it, because it's got six tokens, that this, this whole bit at the beginning um, doesn't, doesn't overcome it. So we can push W2 six stock further towards the end by using even more tokens. So we can say a very artistic painting. Oops, I can spell artistic artistic painting portrait painting. There we go. I can spell portrait. Then when we do that, we'll get a little bit of a change. It, it, it's either the, the cheeks are more red and the things are more red so yeah the, the further towards the end you push that the the more like your thing that you'll get but by far the, the best way to do this is to use the prompt editing instead because this gives you a lot more control and you don't have to just try and push your token to the end although you can still push your token to the end here as you can see um, but this will make it a lot easier to edit because you can just change a number Right, so here, when we generate this one instead, there we go. So now you can see it's a little bit different. We've got a close-up portrait of a steampunk city scape in the background. We've sort of got that. Uh, and here we're using this, this different syntax here. So we've got it in square brackets, which is basically this prompt editing here. So prompt editing, and the syntax from that is from, to, and when. Yeah, so from, whatever you want to start to and when when you want it to happen. So the lower this number here, the more likely, the more like you're embedding it is. So if I do this at 0 0.1, for example, then it will look very much like that photo and not have very much of the other thing in there. So it's still got a little bit of in there, but not, not very much of it at all. Whereas if I do that to 0 0.8, then it will put that token in quite late, only do a few steps on that token, and then it looks a whole lot better. So there we've got the whole steampunk thing going on. So it makes it a lot easier just to play. Maybe you want it half and half. So there we've, we've put the strength of the token essentially to 0.5. Now we've got her with a steampunk hat and, and, and everything there. So that is a, is a way to sort of overcome the strength of some of those embeddings and get some really cool photos with the things that you want. So there, that can be you, or it can be your picture of your cat or whatever you want. And that way you can also create your comics with cool characters. So let's, let's create another one there, just so we can see here at 0.5. And there we go. So there, there it is. So do have lots of fun with your textual inversion. That is Rodent out for now. <laughs>